Hey everyone, this is Nick, and while I always loved the KDE Plasma desktop, I also always felt that it lacked in good, simple applications. But it turns out I was completely wrong. It was a preconceived notion that I should have dispelled a long time ago, because while researching for this specific video, I found a ton of cool applications for KDE that look good, are simple to use, and just work perfectly for a specific purpose. So many cool apps, in fact, that I kind of had to lump a bunch of utilities at the end of the video because I just didn't have enough time to cover everything. But what I had time for is this segue to today's sponsor, who's gonna let you store securely and privately your photos and files in the cloud. Thanks to Internext for sponsoring this video. They offer you some cloud storage space focused on privacy and security. They encrypt all the data you store on your Internext drive and your data isn't visible by any third party at any point during the upload, storage or download process. Everything is encrypted end-to-end -end and GDPR compliant. Internext offers you an online drive and a photo storage solution in the same package, complete with syncing, sharing and backups. And they have apps for all platforms to handle all of that, including Linux, macOS, Windows, Android and iOS so you can get all your files on all your devices. You can get 10 gigabytes for free, and they have plans that go up to 2 terabytes for 8.99 euros per month. And if you want an even better deal, you can use my code Linux Experiment, written in the description below, to get 25% off your purchase of an annual plan for 2 terabytes of storage. So click the link in the description below to learn more and use the offer code Linux Experiment and start storing your files securely and privately. So let's begin with productivity, a domain that KDE is very, very good at. And it might not be the sexiest app to begin with, but we're going to start with Calendar, with a K. Yes, that's going to be a recurring theme in this video. Calendar, as its name indicates, is an app to handle your calendars, but also your tasks. It integrates with your online accounts. So if you have a Google, Nextcloud or OwnCloud set up in Plasma, you'll automatically get all your calendars and task lists. It looks really, really good and it presents everything with nice colors and a modern interface. Calendar offers you multiple views to check on your calendar per month, week or as a schedule. And there's a dedicated task view that you can sort by due date, priority level or alphabetically. It handles lists and completion percentages as well as tags that you can manage directly in the app itself. As per calendar appointments, you can set them to repeat, select a time zone, add tags, a location, attendees, attachments, and reminders. Calendar is a very complete and modern app that symbolizes well what you can do with KDE by mixing power and ease of use. If you want something more hardcore for project management than a task list, KDE also has Plan. Not K-Plan or Plank. Yeah, sometimes you do get normal names. Plan is a project management application that lets you handle tasks and subtasks, but it goes a lot deeper. You'll have to enable the view selector Docker to see more. And in there, you can handle work periods, hours, resources, as in people working on the project, the cost of various tasks and more. Each task can have its own dependencies, a time and cost estimate, a risk factor, and optimistic and pessimistic estimates to let you juggle the things that don't go according to plan. Get it? That's the name of the app. Okay then. Plan also gives you tons of views to better grasp your project, like a Gantt diagram, one focused on milestones, resource assignments, a cost breakdown and more. Each project can have an assigned work package file that people can download, you can add documents to any task, generate reports. It's truly the project management app you'll want to use on Linux if your manager is always on your back about time estimates, costs and who's working on what. It's too bad that I don't have a real job anymore because that's an app I would absolutely have used. Okay, yeah, we have to add an office suite here and KDE has its own. Now granted, it will mostly be usable if you exchange documents with people using the ODF document format as its compatibility with Microsoft Office formats isn't the best out there. But if you work on your own documents that you don't share, there's a lot to love in Caligra. First, it's packed with software, with a word processor, a spreadsheet module, a visual database editor, 
a vector drawing app with a way easier interface than Inkscape, although admittedly less powerful, the aforementioned plan app, and a presentations module. The interface is based on tabs and dockers that you can move at your heart's content to make the interface adapt to everything you need. And while you won't get as many features as LibreOffice or OnlyOffice in there, the app will perfectly respect your desktop settings, complete with global menu support and theming. Caligra isn't something I would recommend to everyone looking for a full-featured replacement for Microsoft Office, but if you only work on your own documents, like writing a few words, making a personal budget, it's definitely worth a look. Now, speaking of personal budget, if you need something a bit more fleshed out than a spreadsheet, you've got Scrooge with another K in the name. While it would definitely benefit from a nice wizard to let you create what you need to get started, like a budget, the bank account it depends on, and a few operations, once you get the hang of it, it's really nice if you struggle to keep count of how much you're spending. Which we all do, right? I cannot be the only one who's surprised to be in the negative at the end of the month, even though I only bought like 20,000 stupid things from Amazon that I only use once. Each expense or operation can be attributed to an account, get an amount, a comment, a mode of payment, a payee, and a category, all of which you can then use to sort your expenses and see where you're over or under budget. It also handles scheduled operations and can import various file types to automatically populate your budget. It's definitely an app that I'm gonna start using right now because I do need to keep a track on what I'm spending, especially on takeout and stupid other gadgets. Now let's move on to media-related applications. And on that front, KDE really shines. For video editing, you've got the Linux staple, Kdenlive. It's a full-featured, non-linear video editor that lets you manage video and audio using tracks. It got tons of effects and transitions that you can apply, and it can import and export to a ton of formats. It can also be expanded with your own wipe transitions, it has a few integrated galleries for clip arts and wipes, and it supports proxy files if your computer can't handle full-resolution files. So you can edit on smaller resolutions, and then export using the real, full-size recordings. The workflow is super simple, with clear tabs that let you sort clips, edit, color grade, and export. And it has tons of advanced tools and a customizable interface to place elements where you want them. Kdenlive is the non-linear video editor that I used to run the channel for the better part of its life. I started with PTV for a few months, then moved to Kdenlive, and I only moved to Resolve because Kdenlive doesn't support GPU acceleration, which shouldn't stop you from trying it out if you have a small project you want to work on. Now for artists, there is no better drawing tool on Linux than Krita. It's a digital painting application with tons of tools and brushes to let you create what you want. It's not only on Linux, but also on Android, so you could even use it there. And it handles graphic tablets and their lovely styluses. Styli? Styluses? The, the little pen-like thingies. Krita also can let you do 2D animation with a new editor. It supports vector and text, the interface is entirely customizable, it uses OpenGL so it's hardware accelerated and uses your GPU to stay fast and smooth, it can import PSDs and you can even record your painting sessions directly from the app. It's something I dabbled with on Android and I produced this fantastic masterpiece. Yeah, I know, I'm such an artist. Okay, so if, like me, you've got no talent for painting or drawing, but you still want a simple app to edit screenshots or draw a few doodles here and there, Color Paint is going to be your go-to. It's basically Microsoft Paint for KDE, with anti-aliasing, which, of course, you can disable if you like that pixel art look. It even has a few effects, like embossing, grayscale, inverting colors, changing the color hue or saturation, and it can draw shapes, fill, color pick, and more. Who needs layers and blur and effects and all of that crap? Real artists just draw on a single sheet of paper. Real artists use color paint. If you have a local music collection and you're looking for a simple but nice looking music player, then Elisa is the one for you. It's basic and will automatically detect your music in your music folder, although you can add other directories if you prefer. It handles playlists, albums, artists and genres, as well as web radios, and has a super simple and clean interface. You can also reduce its window to a mini player if you prefer. A very simple, single-purpose app, something I wish we could see more on KDE. Speaking of which, 
Casts does just that. It plays podcasts. It's described as a mobile app, but don't worry, it works just as well on desktop with an adaptive interface. You can add your own podcast feeds or search for a specific podcast in the Discover tab and add it this way. You'll get a list of all episodes that you can then download and play. It integrates with Gpodder or the Nextcloud Gpodder app to sync your played episodes between devices and you can manage if and how you want to delete played episodes, how the app works on metered connections and the storage the app uses. It's a fantastic little app and with support for syncing your podcast between devices, this might really get me back into podcasts because I use like three or four different devices to listen to them and just checking where I was on one device and picking back up on another was a nightmare. So let's complete this with a grab bag of a few various utilities you might find useful on KDE. First is KDE Connect. If you're a regular of the channel, you've probably heard me rant about this app. It basically lets you integrate your Android phone or now iPhone with your desktop. You can send files to and from each device, use the phone as a remote for audio or presentations or as a trackpad. You can run commands from the phone to the computer and you can even sync your clipboard between devices and receive notifications and answer to messages from your PC. Not only does it work between a phone and a computer, but also between two computers if you prefer. And you can also use it on GNOME using the GS Connect extension. A fantastic must have utility if you often interact between multiple devices. Don't fall into the Twitter trap like me. Get your notifications on your desktop and learn to ignore them. A bit more niche, but still pretty useful if you're into that kind of thing. Subtitle Composer. As its name indicates, it lets you create subtitles for your videos or for someone else's videos. You have tons of options to make those subtitles look like what you want. Open an existing file to modify it, select which language you're working on and export your file. Anime dubbers, that's the thing you need. If you're a regular terminal user, but you don't like opening a terminal window just to run a simple command, why not use Yakwake? Yakwake or Yakuake? I'm not sure how you pronounce that, although the second option sounds like a word that should not be said on this channel. Anywho, with this one, you just press F12 or any other key you prefer, and you get a nice little terminal that drops down from the top of your screen. You run your command, you press F12, and your terminal is nicely hidden, doing its thing. You can of course configure everything about how it looks, where it comes from, what screen space it occupies, and more. A must-have if you often run terminal commands or if you don't want to clutter your window manager with a terminal window. Are you afraid of bloat, of unnecessary files? Are you aware of your privacy? Then install another app to do the cleanup for you. Sweeper lets you clean a bunch of stuff that might take up space on your hard drive, like various caches, cookies, web history, recent documents, command history, and more. It's also really useful to remove stuff that you'd like to stay private. Dolphin is a very powerful file manager, but what if you want more power? In that case, go with Crusader. It handles archives in the file manager, it handles FTP, it has multiple panels to open folders side by side, and tabs inside of each panel. It can sync folders, compare file contents, it can batch rename, and it's completely customizable, on top of having a super powerful search module. Dual pane file managers are a sign you're a complete chat. Couple that with Arch and i3 and you've just won the game of being a human being, I guess. And that's just the tip of the iceberg I had time to include in this video. KDE also offers Falcon, a simple web browser that integrates with your desktop environment. KDE Itinerary, impossible to pronounce for a non-English speaker like me, but amazing to plan trips. Marble, if you like Google Earth but want an open source KDE app to look at the Earth. Articulate to let you learn how to pronounce words in foreign languages and help you learn. K-Algebra and Labplot for all your math learning needs and a lot more. So I can safely say that I was really wrong before. KDE does not lack great applications. It has simple ones, powerful ones, but it has apps for virtually everything. So if you weren't using KDE and had the same preconceived notion, maybe this video will help change your mind and if you were already using KDE, maybe you found out a nice little gem that you might want to try. Just like you might want to try to own your own computer that runs Linux out of the box, thanks to today's sponsor, Tuxedo.
Tuxedo is a company based in Germany that sells laptops and desktops that run Linux perfectly and out of the box. You can pick the distro you want to run or you can just install any distro you want knowing that every single component will work perfectly on your distro of choice. They offer a super wide range of devices from the smallest Nux and, and Ultrabooks to the biggest high-end workstation desktops or gaming laptops. They offer a wide range of keyboard layouts and of configuration options for each device. And I just received like probably something like two hours ago, the latest Stellaris 15, which is their high-end gaming laptop or workstation laptop with 12th gen Intel CPUs and RTX 3080s and everything you might want in the middle. I will review it on the channel pretty soon, but just know it already has the best keyboard I used on a laptop, period, and a fantastic 3K panel that lets you see everything super crisp. So if you need a new device that runs Linux perfectly, just head over to the link in the description below, click it, and get yourself a new device from Tuxedo. Now, thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, you can also dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you are super rich and you want to share that wealth with me, just click on the super thanks button or on the link for my PayPal in the description or become a Patreon supporter or a YouTube member. Both get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye.